This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream. When you sign up at the link in the description, you also get access to Nebula, a streaming video service that City Beautiful is a part of. The Champs-Élysées in Paris, Regent Street in London, Stroll in Copenhagen, the Ringstrasse in Vienna, Via del Corso in Rome, La Rambla in Barcelona, Passage de Gracia also in Barcelona. These are all famous streets for various reasons. They may have symbolic value, have a storied history, or be just really nice places to be. But are they, from an urban design perspective, great streets? Do they have the qualities that make them pleasant, beautiful spaces to inhabit? Things like shade, a sense of enclosure, or a vibrant social life. In this video, we'll discuss some of the characteristics that urban design experts have identified as being critical to the design of great streets. So stick around if you're interested in seeing how these traits apply to some of the great European streets, or stick around if you're just, uh, you know, wanting to travel but can't, and the idea of seeing some picturesque European scenery sounds appealing. Either way, I got you covered. What are the basic ingredients to a great street? Well, it depends on who's using it. A great street for a car probably looks something like this, or maybe a highway like this. Fast, wide, and free of obstructions is perfect for a driver. This video is gonna focus on streets for people on foot, or in a mobility device you would normally see on a sidewalk. I have a video on bike streets if you want more information on that, but we'll be focusing on pedestrians here. The number one thing a pedestrian needs is space. The street can still have lanes for cars, but it must also have enough sidewalk space to be a space to socialize, people watch, window shop, and do all of those things comfortably. Great streets are not just connections from point A to point B, but instead a distinct place with room for activities. Room for pedestrians does not mean wide streets. Narrow streets can be great. It just means that other users have to give up some or all of their space. Walking around the narrow streets of Rome or any city with ancient or medieval histories are proof of this. On the flip side, an extremely wide street like the Ringstrasse can still be quite comfortable for pedestrians, while still allowing for quite a bit of car traffic. The Ringstrasse was built where the old medieval fortifications once stood. New parks, museums, stately buildings, and a grand boulevard took its place in the late 1800s. In some places, it's configured like a multi-way boulevard that offers pedestrians several places to walk between lanes of car traffic. In other spots, it sort of merges with adjacent parks. In all cases, it's evidence that even a wide street can be a great place to walk. The next major consideration is climate and comfort. Pedestrians aren't in protected little boxes like drivers are, so this really matters. Is the street shady when it's hot? Does it feel like a wind tunnel? Does it offer protection from the rain? One of the most famous examples of streets sheltered from the elements is in Bologna. The central city has over 45 kilometers of porticoed streets. The streets essentially have sidewalks covered by the upper stories of adjacent buildings, but the sidewalks are still public. Cars drive through the narrow space between the porticos. The porticos do a good job of keeping out the rain and snow, as well as the hot sun in summer. They are still wide enough to offer the comfort described before. Bologna is one of my favorite cities, thanks to these unique and beautiful streets. Of course, it's possible to make weather-sensitive streets without constructing massive networks of porticos. Trees will do the trick. I love street trees so much that I've already done an entire video dedicated to this topic. I'll just reiterate that they can keep pedestrians cool and dry, and they also improve local air quality and look beautiful doing it. Many of the great streets mentioned in this video have tree canopies to keep people comfortable. I'm going to call out one street that could do a little better. The trees along the Champs-Élysées are trimmed into a boxy form that looks interesting. It creates a distinct parallel line structure, but it does a poor job of creating a canopy. I'd love to see Paris loosen up a bit and let the trees grow as they'd like. I think pedestrians would appreciate it. Over in Spain, could you imagine La Rambla shown here without its trees? Look at that beautiful dappled sunlight. When you think about streets, it's easy to get caught up in thinking about just the ground level. When I was talking about the need for pedestrian space, that's a ground level concern. But truly great streets have walls, a sense of enclosure. You don't have to go as far as Bologna level enclosure, but a good street makes you feel somewhat contained. Nobody wants to walk in the opposite scenario, where you're out in some suburban arterial with all of the buildings too low and too far apart to create enclosure. Even the most pleasing country roads are tree-lined to offer that enclosure. There are two dimensions to enclosure, vertical and horizontal. Vertical is how tall a building needs to be relative to the width of the street. There's no single best ratio here, but most of the great streets have a ratio of one to one to about one to four. 
If you start getting a ratio of one to five, the buildings are too short and too far away to create any enclosure. There are some extreme examples of enclosure, like the Via del Corso in Rome. You get places with 20 meter tall buildings and 11 meter wide streets for a ratio of one to 0.5. This is pretty close to the upper limit of how enclosed a street can feel while still feeling comfortable and not claustrophobic. Horizontal enclosure depends on the type of street. The streets in this video probably need more horizontal enclosure than say, a street of single family homes. For urban streets, if you can see through to the rear yard or alley or the next street over, the horizontal spacing is probably too loose. Now that we have the building massing squared away, what about the other qualities of the buildings themselves? The buildings form the walls of the urban room we call a street, and we don't want boring white walls. There are several important criteria to consider, and the first is transparency. Are there windows at street level or blank walls? Which would you rather walk down? Having windows at street level usually means storefronts and other semi-public spaces on the inside that expand the reach of the street realm. This is why many great streets are also great shopping streets, with elaborate shop windows. Related to this is facade articulation. Windows are great, but if you only have windows like glass office buildings, you can run into the same problem as blank walls. Facade articulation gives the eye something interesting to look at. Remember, when you're on foot, you can notice little details that you never notice in a car. So they really matter to the quality of the street. This is why you see signage like this on a car oriented street and signage like this on a pedestrian oriented one. Little details like multiple cornice lines, windows with divided lights, and embellished doors can create interesting textures and shadow lines that create a visual feast for our eyes. Speaking of doors, entrance frequency is another important consideration. Are there doors spaced every 10 meters or every 100 meters? The closer the doors are spaced, the livelier the street in general. More doors equals better street. Our final attribute, at least for this video, is complementarity. Do the buildings along the street go together? They don't all need to be built in the same era, but they should all work together to form a cohesive streetscape. Back when I was in architecture school, we called these good neighbor buildings. You don't have to have a street that looks like Regent Street in London, which takes this to an extreme and with a nice bend creates a pleasing effect. And you can have a few iconic buildings like a Gaudi on the Passage de Gracia, but in general, buildings should feel consistent and complementary. Now there are many other factors to consider and maybe I'll put that in a part two video. They include things like how a street begins and ends, having many small buildings instead of a few large ones, parking, uh, overall length, and so on. But I hope this gave you a general overview of the design characteristics needed to create a great street. When a street has a few of these characteristics really dialed in, the effect is pleasing for somebody walking down it. Hey, thank you so much for sticking around to the end. And this is the point where I usually talk about a sponsor. And this one is great. It's Nebula and Curiosity Stream. Now, Nebula has a ton of great original content and I really wanna to recommend Tom Scott's Money. It's sort of a game theory game show and I was totally riveted and so was my wife. We binge watched the entire thing. Nebula also has exclusive content for me, including Planning Ancient Rome and a working titles video on Parks and Recreation. A subscription to Nebula starts at just $3 a month or $20 a year. In addition to Tom Scott's original, you get exclusive content from all sorts of fantastic and thoughtful creators like Real Engineering, Minute Physics, and Tierzu. And like I said, I have two Nebula originals for you to check out. One is on the history of the city of Rome, and the other is on the show Parks and Recreation. As if that wasn't good enough, you also get access to the streaming documentary video service CuriosityStream. Let's say you're interested in learning more about cities. They have videos about Rome, future cities, Mazdar, and more. And all of these documentaries are really high quality and included in that extremely low subscription price. So please consider signing up. When you do, you're supporting a platform built by thoughtful creators that you probably already know and love. To sign up, go to curiositystream.com slash citybeautiful. There's a link in the description. Thanks.